All right, yo, internet, and also period seven. Um, there is a famous theorem, which Gossett kind of talks around it, but doesn't come quite right out and say it. Uh, and that is uh, the following theorem. So theorem, uh, G is bipartite. Bipartite, if and only if, uh, G has no odd cycles. Whew. Okay, this is what I called in the list of topics for today, the characterization of bipartite graphs. This turns out to be like the theorem that you want in your pocket if you're gonna prove anything about bipartite graphs. All right, now, this might sound familiar because half of this, the easy direction, was one of the homework problems from last class, which we went over, and which is like easy. Uh, we went over on, on, uh, on Monday. Okay, so first we shall do the forward direction. And I'm going to be semi-hand wavy, but I also know how to do this rigorously-ish if required. Okay, so suppose, uh, suppose G uh, is uh, bipartite. Uh, I would like to show that G has no odd cycles. Well, just like suppose that it does have an odd cycle. So, uh, and that will lead to a contradiction. So, suppose uh, G does have an odd cycle. Um, well, if G is an odd cycle, then it means there's at least a part of G which looks like this. So, uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. But, of course, uh, but then there might be other parts of G as well, right? But, like, then this uh, cycle is like a subgraph of G. But, of course, okay, so just getting back into the frame of mind here, if G is bipartite, what is the definition of bipartite? The definition of bipartite is a graph is bipartite, if it is, if it is possible to partition the vertices into two sets such that every edge in G connects uh, a vertex from one set to a vertex in another set, okay? Um, so if a graph is bipartite, then so must any subgraph also be bipartite because the subgraphs result from just removing edges or vertices but if you start with an already bipartite graph and just remove things, it's still going to be bipartite, agree? Okay, so um, if you have, so if G has an odd cycle in it, then you can just set the subgraph to be that odd cycle. And according to the logic that we just said, this should be bipartite. But of course, an odd cycle graph cannot be bipartite. Uh, if this is like V1 and this is V2 and this is three, and then I'll, I'll throw it, and this is like V4, and I'll just kind of do like dot, 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 and I'll say that this is Vn, where n is odd, then it is impossible to make this uh, bipartite, because if you just kind of think about it, wait. is this clear to everyone, basically? Yeah. I mean, you sort of... There's a simpler, way to, there's a simpler way to prove it, I feel like. Really? Because like... Okay, well, let me do this crap, and then Lawrence will cut in. So, uh, if you just color color the first vertex red, uh, color the second uh, vertex. I think I'm doing this in the correct direction, right? But we're proving bipartite if G has no odd cycles. No, I'm proving what is the forward. forward means oh. from this one to that one. Oh, okay, okay. So I'm, I guess I'm proving the yeah, yeah. only if. Proving if it's yeah. I mean, suppose G is bipartite. Yeah. and proving that it cannot have any odd cycles. Why? Well, suppose it does have an odd cycle. If it's an odd cycle, then that's a subgraph of G, and it would have to be bipartite. But my, my, basically, this whole thing rests on the claim that an odd cycle graph cannot be bipartite, which we, which we actually did last class, right? I mean, and I don't know to what level of rigor. I think we just mentioned it and then sort of hand waves, which is also, also what I'm gonna do now. If V1 is color V1 red, um, V2 can't be in the same partition as V1, so color this green. They must be in opposite partitions, right? But then, so must V3 be in the opposite partition of V2. So color this uh, red. So this, this coloring induces a, uh, a partition, but the problem is that every 
uh, even numbered vertex in the cycle must be in the green uh, set, and every odd numbered must be in the uh, in the red set. So since n is odd, then we have n in the in the or we have v uh, the nth vertex in the red set. But then these two are connecting. Thus, thus this is not bipartite. You could do better, Lawrence. Can we do it better? Lesson, like if you assuming the G is simple, right? Mm -hmm. In order for you to have a cycle, right? You have two groups of V1 and V2. Your cycle has to return to V1 and end in V1, right? And since your only edges go from V1 to V2 or V2 to V1, you know you have to cross an even number of edges in order for there to be a cycle. Yeah. Wait, that's the same order. I feel like it's I feel kind like of the same, same thing, but with same maybe, thing, but maybe, maybe like the way more, he said it is better. It's more. So, um, okay. Uh, so I'll, I'll just finish writing it how I did it. So the way, the way I thought of it is then this cycle just must be bipartite, uh, but then but it isn't so contradiction. I mean that that's basically what I did, uh, right? But it isn't so uh, so so contradiction, and then we we have. Uh, we have that uh, G has no odd cycles. Um, so uh, I think actually what you're about to say is what we did on Monday, right? Maybe. So, so Lawrence, say it again. You said you sort of went in the forward. What'd you do exactly? So it's like you're not even proving my contradiction. You're just saying that if it is, if it has a cycle, it has to be even, right? Because of the, of the okay. So you're saying so you're saying graphs. G must look like this. There's a set A and there's a set B. Yeah. And then just Suppose that you have a cycle at all, without loss of generality, start your cycle in A. In A. As it is bipartite, yeah, I think this is better. As it is bipartite, uh, then the, the next... Every, every edge will take you from A to B. Every edge will take you from A to B. Or B, and B. Then, or, or, or B to A. So then uh, this, this point, if, assuming this is the beginning of a, of a cycle, because we're supposing that there is a cycle, then it would also just take you back here, and then... Um, Basically, every cycle has has even length. Oh wait. Yeah. Because oh yeah. Because to... I eventually have to get back to V one, uh, and so uh, so every cycle has even length. So I guess what Lawrence showed is every if the graph has a cycle, then the cycle is even, which is maybe a more clear way of showing that uh, you can't have any odd cycles. Either there are no cycles at all, or all the cycles are even. Okay, I like that. Um, how are we feeling? All right, good. This is the easy half. Um, now comes the, the hard half, which is the, the this direction. So now I want to prove if G, uh, if G has no odd uh, cycle, uh, then uh, G is bipartite. All right. Um, and this is much less obvious, and, and, and we didn't do this in class, and it wasn't a homework assignment. So, and now I will rotate uh, slightly so we can get some frame. All right, so how does this work? Um, so uh, we copied this off the internet, and then Mike again and I figured out how to do this. So the, the logic is kind of tricky, um, or I thought it was tricky. So here's what we do. We say, all right. Suppose G has no odd cycles. Uh, G has no uh, odd, uh, I guess, taking an arbitrary graph G. Suppose G has no odd cycles. We want to show that G is, uh, is bipartite. So, all right. Um, well, begin. Uh, assigning vertices to, uh, we, we're going to sort of show that this is bipartite like directly by like constructing a, an algorithm to assign the vertices to the two sets A and B. Okay? And it goes like this. Uh, take, uh, so, so take arbitrary vertex, um, this thing we found on the internet, just called it uh, U naught. Okay. Just for comfort. All right. All right. Good. All right. And now, 
Uh, yeah. Okay, good. All right, and now for every single vertex uh, in the graph, um, there is a shortest walk between this. Oh, so uh, is this graph connected? Um, yeah, it might as well be connected because, well, first of all, it's connected, great. If it's not connected, then this entire argument can just be repeated on each component, and then it holds just as well, right? Because separate components can be, can be bipartite in two totally different ways. So you want me to elaborate that? Okay. All right, so, uh, so assume it's connected. So if it's connected, then there's a, then there's a walk between every pair of vertices. So um, for each vertex, uh, find the shortest, so, uh, so for, uh, for each, uh, vertex in uh, the set of all vertices, uh, construct um, the, uh, the shortest uh, walk uh, from um, u naught to uh, v. And like call it, like call it, uh, like, I don't know, p, p for like, half or something. Uh, i. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly what we do. All right. Well. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Well, some of these are. Some of these lengths are going to be odd, and some of them are going to be even. So let. Um, yeah. So let L be the set of all vertices such that. Uh, in B, of course, such that the shortest path from U naught to V is even. Shortest path, uh, yeah. Uh, the shortest path uh, from uh, U naught to uh, V is even. And let R be the set of all vertices in V such that the um, shortest path from U naught to V is odd. Okay. So there's always gotta be there is always a there is always a walk from any uh, vertex U naught to any other vertex, because we've decided we've decided to assume that it's connected. Uh, and there's always the shortest one, because it's all like finite. And so the shortest one is either even or odd. Is everyone cool with that? All right, so this is um, a partition of the set V in the sense that uh, the set of all vertices in L union the set of all vertices in R just is V, and also like that L intersect R is empty because you can't be on a both an even and odd length path, or the shortest path being you know. All right, so I am now going to claim that L and R uh, is the the partition of, of, of G into the into its bi bipartite pieces? Okay. Um, so, how do I do this? Well, suppose for purposes of contradiction that there are uh, so uh, maybe I'll just write this down. So claim uh, claim uh, partitioning partitioning uh, G into L and R like shows it's bipartite or something. Probably need like some better vocab for that, but I don't know. It is a like bipartite partition or something like that. Okay, so 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 now we so finally we say okay. So suppose not. So if not, uh, then it must mean that uh, that there is a that there is an edge between two vertices that are in the same half. So without loss of generality, uh, let uh, U and V both be in L, uh, and you know that there's an edge between, edge between them. Edge between uh, U and V. And I'm gonna show that this leads to a contradiction, and hence G is bipartite. Are we cool? All right, so why does this lead to a contradiction? Maybe you guys kind of like see this already. <laughs> Over here, high tech camera work. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Um, 
since you and me are both in L, they're both um, like an even number of edges away from the from U naught. But then if yeah. they're connected to each other as well, it would form an odd cycle. Basically, that's it. That's the gist of it. Yeah, that if you uh, that there is some kind of path from U naught to U, and since U and V are both in L, it's this path has even length. So there's some even, so even length uh, path or a walk from from U naught to to U, and it's the shortest one. And there is also some um, some even length walk, in fact the shortest one, from U naught to V. But, so the other brothers, now you're not exactly 100% correct here, but, um, or you're not totally done, rather, but this is the general gist, right? That if it looks, if the graph looks like this, uh, then uh, if this is even and this is even and that's one, then that shows that there is a, a, a cycle all the way around, which is of odd length, which is impossible because we assume that there are no odd cycles. So it's pretty awesome. Okay, objection. But like what if those two points are the same or something? Like what if it goes U naught to like a, a shared point and then like us things like that? Yeah, he's like, what if crap is all not quite so simple, right? What if it's like, doesn't all, what if these are not like disjoint sets of, like what if the paths from U naught to U and V like intersect each other in like some terrible way? Yeah, so this was, this was, uh, um, this was, so this is like requires almost like sort of like a lemma. One of them has to be odd. Which is that if there is a the first one? Yeah, odd length one. What do you mean? Walk. Like the first one. Yeah. Uh, so, between uh, two vertices. If, it, if there's an odd it. length, um, what's that called again? Um, Teach the class, I swear. Sir, no. Um, no, what do I want to say? I guess I want to say if there's an odd length walk from one vertex back to itself, then there's an odd length cycle as well. Yeah. Well, you can basically imagine this as like a, a loop, right? Mm -hmm. An odd number loop, and, you, and any cross would just be like folding the loop. Yeah, it's still yeah. Right. It, 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 does, it does still work. So essentially, essentially, if all the vertices on the path from V back to U naught are distinct from all these vertices, we're done. If on the other hand they intersect, well suppose they intersect like somewhere. So let this be the path from U naught to U, and let this be the point X, wherein the path back to um, u not like intersects or whatever, right? Well, then this argument still works because, um, you know, this has length one, and then it's sort of like the unfolding, like he's saying, right? This is the path from u not to x is of some length. Let's call that length like d or something. Well, now I'm subtracting like 2d, you know, an even number from the total length of the round trip circuit. Right, so uh, then that means that now my my cycle is just this one, from x to u to v back to x, and that has to have odd length because, right? Yeah. Or also, if it's like a figure eight, if it's the sum yeah. of those has to be odd, like one has to be odd. And yeah. Has to be. Yeah. That maybe that that's worth mentioning too, right? Yeah. He's like he's like if there's a figure eight, then uh, then or something like that. Okay. Cool. That's pretty good. All right. Uh, all right. All of this was deemed necessary to do the real thing I actually wanted to do, which was um, which was do this freaking number twenty-two from the homework, last homework, mind you. And number twenty-two said something like, "Prove that g is bipartite. Um, g is bipartite." Uh, if and only if every subgraph H of G has an independent set of size at least half of the vertices of H. Every subgraph H of G has, has an independent set in the set of size uh, greater than or equal to half the vertices of, of, of H. This was the theorem, correct? We spent 20 minutes last class trying to do it, and we had a lot of fun. I'll just leave it at that. Math success? No. Fun? Yes. Okay, anyway, here's the proof. Um, again, one of the directions is easy. 
Uh, if it's bipartite, then why is this true? Uh, wait, is this the easy direction? Yeah. So if it's bipartite, well, just duh. If it's bipartite, then every subgraph is also bipartite. And any bipartite graph, so, so that, so, 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 suppose, no, I'll just write it out, because why not? So suppose G is bipartite. Uh, and now take any subgraph H. Well, then H is also bipartite. So what does H look like? Well, H can be partitioned into two sets, A and B. And, like, dude, you know, half of the vertices have to be in A and half in B. Or if it's unequal, then each one of the, um, I guess, each one of the halves of any bipartite partition isn't necessarily an independent set, because none of those guys are related to each other. Blah, you with me? Yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, at worst case scenario, these two sets would be of equal size, but then we still we satisfy the theorem. All right, that was hand lady, but like basically perfect. Mang Ming, we cool? Yeah. Okay, good. All right, and that was the half we did. Um, all right, the other half, uh, I, we, I now realize after reading other people's thoughts, that it's like kind of almost like a corollary of this big theorem that we just proved. Why is this again? Suppose it wasn't my part. Okay, yeah. So basically, what I want to prove now is the subgraph implies the bipartite, right? But instead, let's prove the contrapositive. So the contrapositive is that um, if you're not bipartite, you don't have it. If you're not, no, uh, wait, I'm trying to go from this to that. Yes, if, if you're not bipartite, then, then there exists a subgraph. Okay, so, so claim. Uh, so what I'm actually going to prove is, is, the, is the claim that if, uh, if G is not bipartite, bipartite uh, then uh, like the not of this condition, right? So like the not of this every, uh, every subgraph business, etc. Okay, and then that will show that if every subgraph then it is bipartite. Okay. So, uh, of course, this is what I will do. I will suppose uh, G is not bipartite. And now I have this, um, this if and only if uh, characterization of bipartite graphs. So if G is not bipartite, then what do I know about it? It has an odd cycle. It has an odd cycle. So uh, G has an odd uh, cycle. And what I must now prove is the negation of this sort of every subgraph condition, which, using logic, what I, what I have to show is that there is a subgraph. So I must show that there, there is a subgraph uh, H uh, of G uh, with greater than or equal to half of the vertices of H, uh, an independent set. Well, um, if, I, if I know that G has an odd cycle, then set H to be that cycle. Set H to be that cycle. Is this making sense? Wait, did you show it? Did I just do something wrong? Yes. You didn't negate it. Yeah. Okay, hold on, let me try that again. I have to show that there is a yeah. subgraph H. Oh yeah, which is not. There needs to be like a not in there somewhere. Or just like yeah, there is like a subgraph. Like, like which doesn't. Like, oh, right. It's just that it does not. They're like make it less. That doesn't. Just say like yeah, without. Just say like without. Where the without independent set nice. is. is plus, yeah. yeah. Without. Well, yeah. There is a subgraph that doesn't meet the condition that at least yeah. So without. Where do we go? Okay. <gasps> okay. Set H to be that cycle. And so now, here's what I got my hands on, an odd cycle. And what's up with this odd cycle? Well, it's odd, it's a cycle, and it just can't be the case that half of the vertices of this graph are an independent set. Um, why is that true? Uh, man, um, it's just kind of like duh, but I guess I could do it a little bit better than that. Um, if, if, because uh, what is, so, 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 let's see, uh, so, 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 suppose the independent set, um, David would have did this for me last class, 
So suppose, um, suppose the, the, the independent set has size k. Um, so suppose the independent set uh, has size k. Um, then uh, the condition says that k must be greater than or equal to half of the number of vertices. No, sorry. Uh, oh yeah, the independent set has size k. So k has to be greater than or equal to half and suppose that there are n vertices in the cycle. So v1, v2, v3, v4, dot, 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 vn. So if there are n vertices in the, in the cycle, uh, then k would have to be greater than or equal to half of like, uh, no, let's say 2n plus 1, that's pretty good. Because it's odd. All right, so what, is, what, is, what does that mean about k? It's got to be bigger than n or n plus 1. Bigger than, bigger than, has to be greater than or equal to like n plus a half. Yeah. So greater than n. What? Yeah. Yeah. So in other words, k has to be greater than or equal to n plus 1. Yeah. But that cannot be. Uh, because if you had an independent set of size n plus 1 or bigger, then someone finishes off. Um, my brain's gone. You just can't do it. Yeah, like one you one. have to go every other one. You have to go every other one. one. You like yeah, pitch yourself. He threw Somewhere. in like a little pigeonhole principle in there somewhere. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, so, so you can yeah, you can make like n groups of adjacent ones, and then like the one at the end you can't use anyway. So then like you know like, you have to pick one of them, so you can only have n in total. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So it'd be like, group those two together. Sure. And then like the next two, like that, right? Yeah. So? Yeah. yeah, kind of, but like not, yeah. Because it's not like you can pick, there's only really like two cycles you can make. Yeah. Two, two like sets you can make. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Impossible contradiction. <laughs> uh, so, um, we're good. Are we good? All right. Um, that's... Some math just happened there.